that you believe you buy into and that you're empowered when you're in a matrix, it's not real. You understand that? When you play some boxing game and beat Muhammad Ali, you didn't really beat Muhammad Ali. You would be get more fulfillment going and joining a boxing club and three years later beating somebody who beat you at first. That would be a thousand times more fulfilling, not the fake synthetic garbage. We're on the march. Not the prosthesis. The empire's on the run. Not the image Alex of the Jones real thing. The GCN I want Radio Network. real. Give it to me now. That is all coming up. And then Ben Swan is scheduled. He's here in Austin uh, of BenSwan.com and his own alternative media group. He is going to be joining us coming up in studio as well uh, during this worldwide transmission uh, here today. But before we go any further, I want to start to break down the situation that is unfolding uh, in the Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainian government has voted to join with the Russians. Uh, this has escalated the situation quite a bit. Again, Crimea votes to join Russia, accelerating Ukraine crisis. Uh, that is what is being reported by Reuters. And they're talking about sanctions against Russia now becoming somewhat of a certainty. First, they were talking about them a few days ago. Now they're saying they need, they're going to try to get them in place uh, via the State Department and NATO and the EU. There's talk of not letting Russians come here or travel into the EU, you name it, with their visas. Uh, these are really acts of war uh, that are being discussed. When, when, and I'm not defending the Russian position. It's just that the West did foment this. They did overthrow an elected government. Russia had secured its gas pipelines in its port and it's 75% Russian in the area they grabbed. It's a small area of Eastern Ukraine. And uh, you now have confrontations going on the last four or five days that have been on television with Ukrainian troops marching up to Russian bases that have been there forever, for hundreds of years, really, in many cases, uh, and threatening to attack them. This could escalate very, very quickly, obviously. Everybody knows that. I was hoping when Putin stopped it, Crimea, that this would de-escalate things a few days ago. That does not appear to be what's going on. Meanwhile, uh, I was, again, early this morning, um, watching some of the committee hearings from yesterday uh, with McCain, and he's making more statements today. And It was the most canned garbage I've ever seen to Secretary of Defense uh, Hagel. And the clips are out there. He was saying, how can you be cutting the Pentagon budget right as the Russians invade Ukraine? This could not be worse, was his quote. And what are we going to do? You notice the day that we cut defense spending last week, the Russians invaded, as if that's why they invaded. They cut some of the increase in defense spending. Some of the increase in defense spending. The United States spends half, half, look it up, of the world's money on defense. All other countries combined or the other half? Look it up. Hey, guys, just type it in for TV viewers. Type in uh, U.S. accounts for half of world's uh, defense spending. It'll show all sorts of graphs. Some cases it's 54%, 51, 52. I'm just saying half to be safe. With the cuts, it's about half. And then meanwhile, China just boosted their defense spending 12%. They've been doing that every year for a while. And we're giving them our secrets. I mean, I don't want to hear about national defense while our government basically hands out all the secrets to everybody. They just showed the pie chart from Wikipedia showing the United States uh, being roughly half uh, of world spending. Some of the pie charts show it 49%, 48%. Uh, but technically, if you add the supplemental and black budget, it's way over 50%. The point is that... The military-industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about in 1961 is run by these offshore globalist banks and is openly training with Northcom for sedition and criminal oppression of patriots and Tea Party people. So, again, I'm not bashing the military personnel themselves. I'm bashing the directives coming out of the globalists that control the federal government. But it really hit me this morning when I was watching that at about you know 7 a.m. watching the, the, those. I say I watched the news. I was watching 
the hearings from yesterday on YouTube. I don't really tune into mainstream television very often unless I see it in the background or monitor it here in the office. We keep an eye on it, but we, we mainly get it from the aggregators. The point is, is that it hit me. Of course, one reason they started this attack uh, a few weeks ago was because they didn't vote to join the EU to be sucked dry. But more than that, it's just they need a new Cold War. They've told us, don't worry about Al-Qaeda anymore. They're our buddies. The new domestic enemies, the Tea Party and gun owners and veterans and li libertarians and conservatives. So that's what Northcom's for. And the international enemy is the Ruskies and the Chicoms, who the globalists are arming to the teeth. But Russia is a real enemy of these people because they're not controlled by the globalists because they kicked a whole bunch of oligarchs out you know, post-1991, 92, 93, 94, uh, when Yeltsin became a total you know, drunk and just sat at the back while Putin, Putin as vice president, uh, actually uh, ran the show. I mean, Putin's been, been the president probably since about 93. And then in 99, officially, when Yeltsin could no longer stand up or talk, uh, they're probably drugging him, who knows, uh, you know, became the uh, El Presidente. So that's just some of what's going on here in the background. But it just hit me. Why do they want a 12-year war in Iraq, a 12-year war in, in Afghanistan, or an 11-year war in Iraq, 12, 13-year war in Afghanistan? In their own words, they want trillions of no-bid contracts. They want the war. The journey is the destination. They want overstressed, burnout, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tour troops to come back and be cops. They, war is the health of the state, it has been said by many a historian. I forget who originally said it. We got search engine that. Who said, quote, war is the health of the state? It was Bismarck. The point is, Von Bismarck, I know he said similar things. Von Bismarck of Deutschland. And you sit here and you watch this happening as the state grows and the groups that are around the state get bigger. And they destroy the economy, but they don't care because they're like a cancer. They just grow and grow and grow. And then John McCain, the guy that was over there last year when he wasn't in, in Syria trying to fund al-Qaeda, stirring up the ultra anti-Russian, Ukrainian, white supremacist nationalist. I mean, that's who they are. And you've got George Soros involved, the famous Nazi collaborator. And it just shows you everything they claim they are, they're the opposite. Give your rights up, Al-Qaeda's going to hit us. Meanwhile, McCain's running Al-Qaeda for all intents and purposes to a great extent. George Soros, you know, shut down free speech in America. Pro-gun is pro-Nazi. Meanwhile, he's a real Nazi. They say that Randolph Bourne said it in 1918, war is the health of the state. Yeah, but I think he was paraphrasing von Bismarck. But search Bismarck, war, war is the health of the state. Doesn't matter. The point is, it is the health of the state at the expense of everybody else's health. But here are the headlines. McCain lashes Defense Secretary Hagel over cuts to Pentagon budget. Total and complete theater. Timing is exquisite, Senator says in sardonic questioning. And again, uh, it goes over the quote about, quote, the timing is exquisite, offering a sharply Reduced budget when the world is probably more unsettled than any time since World War II, Senator John McCain derisively declared Wednesday. The Arizona Republican did not disguise his chagrin with the reduced budget as he sardonically sparred with Defense Secretary Hagel at the Senate budget presentation. And depending on how you slice it, I guess they are cutting the increase in the Pentagon budget that's never been cut, basically, um, since 88 or so. They are cutting the increase by about half. And as Rand Paul has said, they should be cutting the defense budget by 20%, I mean, and consolidating. And I mean, we're going bankrupt, folks. But again, the globalists want that. They want us totally in debt. The real national security threat is our job shipped to the third world, our industry, our infrastructure falling apart, our government attacking our culture, our government attacking the birth rate, our government deindustrializing us, our government bringing in the largest immigrant populations any country has ever absorbed and then programming them with anti-nationalistic, anti-free market, anti-family, anti-gun propaganda. The national security threat is transferring our secrets to China and every other country that wants them. Our national security threat is the foreign megabanks that have stolen 
over $47 trillion the last six years since 2008, pumping it into their coffers, who've signed us on to $1.5 quadrillion. I should do a special report about the real national security threat. I guess I'm doing one right now, but show all the documents, all the articles, all the clips. We are fully conquered by a corporate kleptocracy that operates through administrative law and through shenanigans. And it's operating, and we're thinking of the old military threat where an enemy or a tribe over the hill comes and tries to take your watering hole or comes and tries to hunt in your hunting area. And you don't run them off, so next they're grabbing your women. You're thinking at a 10,000 B.C. level, folks, and the globalists are running around in suits and ties, conquering everything, and now they want to secure their usurpation. They want to secure uh, their usurper role, and so they are engaged in active war against the cattle that is the general public and denigrating the health and vigor of the species. And, of course, through 100 monkey and epigenetics, and all of the science that shows what goes around comes around.